Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back to Bible Read Along! I am so excited. We are starting the book of John today. And it is exciting times. I love the book of John. We are going to do a deep dive into it chapter by chapter through the NIV version, learning, growing together. And we welcome you. This is a great place to connect. If you got questions, you got comments, jump on in. Um, we are live right now on Facebook. Hello, Facebook crew. I see people there. Welcome. Good morning. We are also live on TikTok. Thank you so much for joining us. Say hello in the comments. Let me know where you are from, whether you are watching on TikTok or Facebook or even later on YouTube or podcast or listening later. God bless you. Daryl's here on TikTok. Thank you so much for joining us. My brother Daryl, Hope Dealer, the Praise and Worship Party. Make sure you go follow his channel. On Facebook, I see many people here. You know what I didn't set up is the actual Facebook chat. I will have to do that tonight. But I see Lynn from Edmonton area. Welcome. Michelle here in Red Deer. Lisa, so glad you're here from Phoenix, Arizona. Sarah, we missed you last night, but good to see you here this morning. Matthew in Kelowna, BC. Miranda, good morning everyone from Lexington, Oklahoma. Please pray that God opens doors for me to be able to obtain company paid commercials driver's license training. Amen. Go get that class one. Get that commercial training. Whatever it is. Whatever level it is. Morning, Joshua. Jerry, welcome. I'm doing better. My throat's still bugging me a bit. Morning, Dennis. Amy. So many people. So many people in our community joining in. I see Ryan from Fraser Lake, BC. I don't know where that is. And I'm a BC boy, so um, that's awesome. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome others that are joining in today. I think we're working. I think everything's live. I think sound's working. Video's working. Um, I think we did it. We did it. We got a new computer um, two weeks ago. Had to been spent some time setting it up. In the meantime, we were doing devotionals from the Celebrate Recovery Bible. And if you missed those, you can go back. They're available only on Facebook. So if you want, go check out those devotionals that we did from the CR Bible. My name is Daniel. For those that don't know me, I love Jesus. He has changed my life and I am committed to follow him, to learn the word, to um, to share it with others. And so my name is Daniel. I'm here with my wife, Ashley. She's waving at the door. She's getting her morning coffee and getting things ready so that she can function. We have uh, Pastor Ratnam from, <laughs> so she can function from Pastor Ratnam from India. That's awesome. Miranda, I like the new setup. Thank you. Every time we do a new book, we get a new setup. So on TikTok, we have a whole new look there. On Facebook, we have a whole new look here. And we are just so excited. So today is... A little bit different I'll give you the rundown we like to give you tools on how to read the Bible tools on how to read the Bible and Ryan I see your question there I will answer all questions at the end so if you want to stick around we'd love to have you if you want to just ask questions um, maybe come back in about 20 25 minutes and that's all I'll be doing is answering questions like that um, but we love to give you tools because we believe at Bible Read Along in Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled believers. Bless you, my love. That's what we want to see developed. We want to see people Bible-based. And how do you become Bible-based? Well, there's tools to do that. And so I'm going to show you a couple tools today that could potentially help you 
Oh, I thought I had set up hotkeys here, but they are not working. Okay. Um, so here's, here's just the average Bible. And maybe we'll just open in prayer right now. And then we'll dive into this actually. So Lord Jesus, thank you so much for a new day. Your mercy is new every day. And today, as we woke up, as we took our first breath of the day, Lord, that you gave us another gift. You gave us today. And so, Lord, we want to use this gift for you, for your glory. We ask that you be here now, that your presence be here, and that, Lord, you bring life and hope to every person listening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. We are so glad. Again, keep commenting. I want to hear from you. See you. Um, if you're new and just jumping in, let me know where you're from. We would love to hear from you. Karen Osmond's here, one of our team. Um, lots of people here. Mary Brown. Thanks for your great chicken. Absolutely. That's a joke, by the way. Mary Brown's is a chicken place. Amy, welcome. Seeing if I missed anyone here. Morning from Texas, Valentina, Indiana. So, so good to have everyone on here. So the Bible, we want to give you tools to read. So when we go to the Bible, John chapter one, NIV version, this is what we will be reading. And tomorrow we have a special guest, Pastor Brian Lucas from Nevada will be sharing with us the first part of John chapter one. Today, we're going to look at some tools. So all I'm on right now, all that you see on the screen is biblehub.com, biblehub.com. If you're on TikTok, you won't see everything I'm showing. However, feel free to come join us over on our Facebook channel and then come on back later when we just do question and answers exclusive to our TikTok audience. So biblehub.com, John chapter one, pretty basic. Here it is. But if I scroll up a little bit right above it here. <clears throat> are all these tools parallel um parallel translations cross references references commentaries lexicon sermons about this chapter topical studies strong's concordance comments interlinear the greek now right below those are some more tools so here is the summary and this is the one we're going to highlight today because who is your best friend when reading the bible Context. Context is your best friend when reading the Bible. The summary she gives us, <laughs> Ashley says Jesus is her best friend when reading the Bible. <laughs> um, but when, when um, context is so important, we need to read the scripture. And often a lot of the questions that come on TikTok are out of context. They're one question at a time that say, well, what does this verse mean? What does this mean? In Psalms, it talked about this and that. And do you believe this? And, and they, they want to take one verse and they don't read the whole context. They don't understand. To understand scripture, we have to understand the context of what it was said in. So this sum tool, I'm on Bible Hub. Dot com. But there's tools also. I use it. I can't show you on my phone because I'm doing TikTok. But on my phone, I use the Bible app, the U version Bible app. Um, when I go to it, my wife said I could show you on hers. U version Bible app right there. I'm going to go back to a bigger camera view here. U version Bible app, the Bible, Holy Bible, Holy Bible. If I click into that, it goes to her main screen. And now if I go to Bible at the bottom and I go to John, and she's already on it, John intro. John intro. Not sure if you can see that. It just went right to it. So that's the John intro. And so now you can actually read through this same thing on the Bible hub. Dot com. When I go to summary, it actually gives me a context outline of the book of John. Have you seen this before? Do you use this? Let me know in the chat if you have seen this or if you use these tools. So now when I'm going through this, I could actually read this. John, 
closes his book by revealing his purpose in writing Jesus' story. These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the NIV intro version. And so I could go through this. John begins his book by echoing, echoing the words from the Bible's creation story in Genesis, showing his reader in this story of new creation that just as the first creation was completed in seven days, John uses the number seven throughout his book over and over. We see seven miracles, seven signs. We see seven I am's in John. We see seven different things. So he, this is a great tool to give you context of the Bible. So I'm going to read the one on the screen so that everyone can read along on Facebook. Again, if you want to see, if you're on TikTok and you want to see the actual verses and stuff, come join us on Facebook for a little bit. And you have them in your Bibles, in the Celebrate Recovery Bible. Thank you, mine's packed up. We did our Celebrate Recovery two-year anniversary. So at the beginning, even in the physical Bible, they're going to be there where you can see these chapters and go, oh, here's an overview. What's the theme? Um, <laughs> seeing is believing. Remember, the key verse for this is um, that you may be saved. I have shared these things that you may be saved. Who's the author? Well, it's the God. It's the Apostle John. It's one of the first written um, gospels. It's encouragement. And then in the recovery Bible, it actually has recovery highlights. How does recovery be highlighted in the book of John? So these are cool. These are just amazing tools. Cool I, tools they're, for Jesus. They're cool tools for Jesus. Our new slogan, cool tools for Jesus. Um, <laughs> so make sure you check out these cool tools for Jesus, though, because it's going to take your Bible reading to the next level. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to read this one. And then I'm going to cheat. And some of you are maybe going, I'm not a good reader. I don't know. I don't understand these contexts. Good news. You brought it up what you're about to do. Good news. Amy did. Yes. Amy, you're already ahead of me because we are going to watch the Bible Project, which actually has two parts to the Gospel of John, but we're only going to do part one today. When we reach chapter 12 and 13, we'll do part two. So... Let's read this one and then we're going to watch. That's why I said I'm cheating because we're going to watch the um, the Bible Project one. And on TikTok, I'll flip the camera so you can see that as well. <coughs> John Summary. The book of John is a gospel that contains narrative history, sermons, <clears throat> parables, and a, pro a few prophetic oracles. Now, why is it telling us the types of writings that are found in John? Context. Again, everything is about context. Because something that is a parable, what's a parable? It is a fictional story with a moral point. So a fictional story, parables are not historical. If I took it as historical, we would read every parable and go, oh, this is history. And it's not. It's a made up story. So we then we misunderstand the context of what's being said. Some of these are prophetic oracles. What does that mean? It means it's forth telling, but it's also very symbolic. There's going to be symbolism and pictures and and we may not always understand the prophetic. We have to weigh it against the word of God. So that's going to be different. A, a prophetic word is going to be different than a sermon from Jesus Christ. So it tells us the different types of, of writings in this. It was written by the disciple or the apostle John around 85 to 95 AD. Why is this important? Because people are going to come and say, and you hear this all the time, especially more on TikTok where people argue a lot more. Um, you're going to hear, well, the Bible's not true. How do we know it's true? Who can believe the Bible? It was written by eyewitnesses at the time or shortly after that they had witnessed these events. So when you compare Bible manuscripts compared to other historical writings, there's so many more, and they're at a much shorter time frame than some others. For instance, there are like other writings like um, 
the Iliad, the, the Odyssey, these kind of things um, from Plato and these kind of things, but they're not written until hundreds of years after that had already happened. The Bible is written within decades of what actually happened, probably within 30 to 50 years of when Jesus was alive. The key personalities of this book are Jesus, his 12 disciples, Mary Magdalene, John the Baptist, Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha, Jewish religious leaders, and Pilate. It was written so that all may believe. That is our key scripture phrase in this book of John, that all may believe. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who gives eternal life. John's gospel uses the word believe 98 times and the word life 36 times in an effort to embed the importance that one must believe in order to live eternally. John is not one of the three synoptic, synoptic common view gospels, but instead it's written with a more theological substance yet equally as inspired as and important as the other three Gospels. Now, what does this just say? This is important because we look and some people will just go, oh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're all the same. They're not. They're written from a different view with a different perspective to convey a different point. The point of John is the deity, the Godship of Jesus Christ. So some of you maybe already saw my video a couple of days ago while I was still feeling better about is Jesus God? Well, yes. And before we even get into it, the intro here, before we even read it, the comment, the, the, the context of this is to prove that Jesus is God. And so um, my wife is currently feeding our cat coffee right that. now. She dips her finger in the coffee, then feeds the cat. Okay. She loves it. Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> so this is a theological substance versus some of the other ones are like stories of Jesus. What happened? The birth. The, the And this one starts different. The whole gospel of John starts different than other gospels because they kind of go through a lineage. They go through the birth. They go through the shepherds, the wise men, some of them. And John just starts very different. Chapter 1 is the preamble of the Messiah's coming ministry. John gives clear evidence that Jesus is more than just a man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not a God. That A is not in there. And if you are reading a Bible that says a God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God, I'm going to just warn you right now, you are not reading an accurate Bible. And so if that is the Bible you are reading, I'm not going to say which one it is. If you're reading it, you know, um, but that is not an accurate Bible and it you do not have an accurate understanding of who God is or who Jesus is. John then describes that the word is Jesus. The word is Jesus who became a man to live among us. The beginning verses in the first few chapters teach us that Jesus is more than just a man who came into existence, but rather he is infinite God. Jesus is God. Chapters 2 to 12 consist of Jesus' ministry. He meets with religious leaders named Nicodemus and teaches him that no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. Several times throughout the book, I'm going quick because we're going to watch the video too. Um, several times throughout the book, Jesus claims he him, he himself is God. I and the Father are one, John 10, 30. Jesus also repeats and applies to himself the Jehovah statement, I am, as found in Exodus three fourteen. For example, when Jesus declares, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. I am the bread of life. Jesus actually throughout the book of John uses this phrase in a, not just a, I'm going to the store. I'm going to the store. Jews would have said that. Hebrews would have said that at the time. I am going to the store. I'm, I am visiting my family. They would have used the phrase I am. However, when Jesus says it, 
He also says it often in reference to historical things that they would have related to the temple, the promised Messiah, God himself. So when he says these things, he is declaring to the people over and over, I am God. I am the one who is here. I am the Messiah. Let's keep going here. Uh, the events in chapters 13 to 17, so the last whole portion of the Bible really, um, of this book rather, occurs in less than 24 hours before Jesus' death. They describe the details of the Last Supper, Jesus' disciples. Then we're going to skip down here. Chapters 18 to 21 portray the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Hallelujah. He rose from the dead, proving he is God, forgiving us of our sins so that all may believe and receive life. Um, that's, that's the summary. That's how to use those tools. Cool tools for Jesus. Cool tools for Jesus. So we're going to take a moment now and watch. Um, it's about nine minutes long, and that'll be it for today on Facebook. We'll stick around and answer a few questions. But we're going to watch the overview of John from the Bible Project. And I'm going to flip around the camera here for TikTok crew. See if I can do this. Sorry, you're getting a close up of my face right now. How do I flip this around? Yep. Um, I just have to remember how. It's been a while since I've done this. Enhance, flip camera. There we go. There we go. All right. Here we go with the Bible project. Let's go. It's one of the earliest accounts of Jesus' life, and we learn at the end of the book that it comes from one of Jesus' closest followers called the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, he appears many times in the story itself, and there's some debate about whether it's John, the son of Zebedee, one of the twelve, or a different John who lived in Jerusalem and was known in the later church as John the Elder. Whichever John it was, the book embodies his eyewitness testimony, and it's been brilliantly designed with a clear purpose that he states near the end. John says, the story is written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that by believing you may have life in his name. John believes that the Jesus you read about in this book is alive and real and that he can change your life forever. The book's design is really cool. Its first half opens with an introductory poem and a short story that's followed by then a big block of stories about Jesus performing miraculous signs that generate increasing controversy. And it all culminates in his greatest sign, the raising of Lazarus, which creates the greatest controversy as Israel's leaders decide to kill Jesus. And that launches into the book's second half. These chapters focus on Jesus' final night and last words to his disciples, which are followed by his arrest, trial, death, and resurrection. The book concludes with an epilogue. In this video, we're just going to focus on the first half. So the book opens with a two-part introduction. First, a poem that begins, in the beginning, was the Word, an obvious allusion to Genesis 1, when God created everything with his Word. Now, a person's words, they're distinct from that person, but they're also the embodiment of that person's mind and will. And so John says that God's Word was with God, that is distinct. And yet the word was God, that is divine. And as we ponder this claim, we hear later in the poem that this divine word became human in Jesus. Then John goes on to draw from the stories of Exodus, saying that Jesus was God's tabernacle in our midst. The glorious divine presence that hovered over the Ark of the Covenant became a human in Jesus. Which leads to his last claim, that the one true God of Israel consists of God the Father and the Son, who has become human to reveal the Father to us. Now, as we consider these mind-bending claims, we then start to hear a story about how John the Baptist first met Jesus and then led other people to meet him and become his disciples. And one by one, as people encounter Jesus, they say out loud who they think he is. And in this one chapter, Jesus is given seven titles. Now, these titles prepare us for John's love of sevens in designing the book, but altogether, they also make a claim. 
that this fully human Jesus from Nazareth is the messianic king, he's the teacher of Israel, and he's the son of God who will die for the sins of the world. Now that's a big claim to make about someone, and John will now go on to support it through the stories in chapters 2 through 12. They all have the same basic pattern. Jesus will perform a sign or make a claim about himself, and that will result in misunderstanding or controversy. And so in the end of each story, people are forced to make a choice about who they think Jesus is. The first section shows Jesus encountering four classic Jewish institutions, and in each case, Jesus shows that he is the reality to which that institution pointed. So Jesus is at a wedding party, and the wine runs out, and Jesus then turns these huge jugs of water, like 120 gallons total, into the best wine ever. And the head waiter says to the groom, you've saved the best wine for last. Which is, of course, true, but John also calls this miracle Jesus' first sign. In other words, it's a symbol that reveals something about Jesus. So just as Isaiah said that the messianic kingdom would be like this huge party with lots of good wine, so this first miraculous sign reveals the generosity of Jesus' kingdom. Next, Jesus goes to the Jerusalem temple, the place where heaven and earth were supposed to come together and God would meet with his people. And Jesus asserts his authority over it, running out all the money exchangers, stopping the sacrificial offerings. And when the temple leaders threaten him, he says, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Jesus is claiming that his coming sacrificial death is where heaven and earth will truly meet together. His body that will be killed is the reality to which the temple building points. Then Jesus has this all-night conversation with a rabbi named Nicodemus who thinks that Jesus is just like him, another rabbi and teacher for Israel. But Jesus says that Israel needs much more than just another teacher with new information. Israel needs a new heart and a new life. Or in his words, no one can experience God's kingdom without being born again. Jesus believes that humans are caught in a web of selfishness and sin that leads to death. But he also knows that God loves this world. And so he's here to offer people a new birth, a new chance at life. From here, Jesus travels north, and he ends up at a sacred well in a conversation with a Samaritan, that is a non-Jewish woman. And they start talking about water, which Jesus turns into a metaphor for himself. He says he's here to bring living water that can become a source of eternal life. Now in John, this term refers to a new quality of life, one that's infused with God's eternal love, and it's a life that can begin now and last on into the future. After this, John has designed another collection of stories that took place during four Jewish sacred days, or feasts. And again, Jesus uses the images related to the feasts to make claims about himself. So Jesus first heals a paralyzed man on the Sabbath, which starts a controversy with the Jewish leaders about working on the day of rest. And Jesus says it's his father who's working on the Sabbath, and so is he. And they catch his meaning, that he was calling God his father, making himself equal with God, and so they want to kill him. The next story takes place during Passover, the feast that retold the Exodus story with the symbolic meal of the lamb and bread and wine. And Jesus miraculously provides food for a crowd of thousands, which results in people asking him for more bread. And then Jesus goes on to claim that he is the true bread, and if they eat him, they will discover eternal life. And this offends many people who stop following him. After this is a block of stories set in Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles, which retold the story of Israel's wilderness wanderings as God guided them with the pillar of cloud and fire and provided them water in the desert. And Jesus gets up in the temple courts and he shouts, If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. And then later he says, I am the light of the world. He's claiming to be the illuminating presence of God and the life-saving gift of God to his people. And some people believe and follow him, but others are offended and still others try to kill him for these exalted claims. The final feast story is during Hanukkah, which means rededication. It's about how Judah Maccabee cleared the temple of idols and set it apart as holy once more. And Jesus goes into the temple area and says that he is the one whom God has set apart as the Holy One, and that he is the true temple where God's presence dwells. And he also says, I and the Father are one. This makes the Jerusalem leaders so angry, they set in motion a plan to kill Jesus, and so he retreats from the city. Now all these conflicts, they culminate in one last miraculous sign. 
Jesus hears that his dear friend Lazarus is sick, but his family lives near Jerusalem, which is now a death trap for Jesus. Now, Jesus could stay away and he would save his own life, but he loves Lazarus. So once he hears that Lazarus has died, he goes to raise him from the dead and he calls him to life out of his tomb, knowing that it will cost him his own life. And the news of this amazing sign, it spreads quickly, of course, and just as Jesus knew it happened, the Jerusalem leaders hear about it and begin conspiring to murder him. And so he rides into Jerusalem as Israel's king, who's rejected by its leaders. So the first half of John draws to a close with this story about Jesus laying down his life as an act of love for his friend. And this, of course, is also a sign pointing forward to the cross, which we'll explore more in the next video. But for now, that's the first half of the Gospel of John. All right, so that's the overview of John. I'm going to flip this camera back. There we go. Now it's way zoomed in on my face. Ah, come on, stand up. Fix the camera. Is it on you? No, it's on me. It's just messed up. There we go. All right, so that is the overview of the first half of the book of John. Truthfully, for me, it just gets me excited. Some of the stories that are mentioned, some of the the theology, your belief of who God is, the revelation of who God is, is exciting to me because we're going to go deep into this chapter by chapter and walk through it. We're going to have guest hosts. Um, tomorrow we have Pastor Brian Lucas guest host um, the first part of John chapter 1. It's going to be exciting. For the best viewing experience, those watching on TikTok, the best viewing experience is Facebook. However, we're going to be live on TikTok, live on Facebook. We would love for you guys to join us. What do you think? Are you ready for the book of John? And will you be joining us for this adventure chapter by chapter as much as you can? Let me know in the comments and um, we'd love to hear from you. Those on Facebook, that's our time for today. So if you got questions, comments, we'll spend just another two minutes here on Facebook. Otherwise, come on over, join us on um TikTok, and we just spend the next 20 minutes or 30 minutes just answering questions and talking about conversation, whatever comes up. I am so looking forward to John. Matthew's looking forward to John. If you guys are ready, you're looking forward to John, hit the thumbs up, comment that you are excited for John, and help us out. If you'd like to help us out, share this with friends. Follow us on all our other social media and visit BibleReadAlong.com. There are ways there. Um, made it through almost the whole morning without coughing. Um, there are ways there to check out our books. We have Bible notebooks available for sale. We have a prayer book available for sale. We have a prayer course available for free that you can go and watch. We have... Um, links to Sharpie Gels, the best highlighters for Bible reading. Sharpie Gel, not a sponsor, not yet, but Sharpie, contact me. I'd love to talk to you. Um, Sharpie Gels, links to the Celebrate Recovery Bible. And if you're just going, I believe in, in what Bible Read Along is doing. I believe in people being encouraged and changed by the word of God, equipped and trained to read it, Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled believers. If you're going, I believe in people coming to hear the gospel on social media and through other mediums, and you would like to donate towards this ministry, please do that at BibleReadAlong.com. Your finances partnered with us help us keep this moving forward we just bought a new computer we have lights we got mics we got things that cost money and and i'm going to just be honest me and ashley pay for all of it ourselves we take care of everything I we don't pay for it we either. you do we've had this we've been doing this for over four years now put a lot of time in a lot of money 
but we can only go so far with our investment and what we can do. But if we join together, the reach that we can have and the growth that we can have exponentially expands to reach more and more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So would you please consider making a one-time donation or a monthly partner donation? And that might even be as small as $5. And every single gift is important. But if you would like to do that, please check out BibleReadAlong.com. Lisa says, I'm all in. Karen says, yes, she's ready for it. Matthew, looking forward to the book of John. Um, Sarah, thank you as well for your congratulations on our Celebrate Recovery group. Home Church Celebrate Recovery, the church that we... Uh, the church that we attend has had Celebrate Recovery. I've been leading their Celebrate Recovery ministry for the last two years. We celebrated our two-year anniversary last night with about 50 other people and cake and food. We ordered Chinese food. It was amazing. And uh, we just had a great, great night. So um, that's it. That's it on Facebook. Come on over. Stick around on TikTok if you want to talk. We're going to answer some questions and maybe talk a bit about, is Jesus God? Lisa says, dig deep, help if you can. Um, and thank you. Thank you to those that have already given and helped. But if you can help, please do. Please do. And I'm not one to, I'm not one to just sit here and beg for money. We're going to keep this going no matter what. What I am doing is asking for the opportunity to see this grow exponentially. I'm asking for the opportunity for us to stand together and bring the gospel to Jesus to, of Jesus Christ to the world. And we cannot do it alone. So there are ways you can help. Follow us on social media. Share our social media with other friends and family members. And financially, if you would like to. And financially, there's ways you can help too. You can buy our notebooks. Um, you can buy the notebooks. Hey, babe. I have to. I just realized she just gave all my notebooks away last night. And I think one of those had writing in it. Oops. You can buy the notebooks. You can buy things through our, our link. You can donate. If you shop on Amazon, go to our store and just click through. And buy anything you want on, um, buy anything you want. Go buy a barbecue. Buy, and those, we get a small percentage from Amazon. It doesn't change the cost. But if you shop through Bible Read Along, you're going to get our link. And that helps us out as well. So there's lots of ways to help there. That's it for today on Facebook, guys. Thank you so much. Once again, this has been Bible Read Along. And we just love having you here. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com